Dutch Bros Coffee. If a Dutch oven doesn't get you out of bed in the morning, then maybe a Dutch Bros Coffee will. A car ride that you don't remember starting soon heads towards a disco that serves coffee. This happened before. This is routine. A human ball of energy comes at you fast. They know your name. They know your browser history. You're asked how your neighbor's dog's allergy is doing. They remembered. They always remember. It's infectious. Not the dog's allergy. The upbeat customer service Dutch Bros Coffee is known for. You tell them your order, while your head is nodding to the beat of the background music. That's also the foreground music. You are now using words you've never used before. You don't know whether they mean what you think they do. Now the voice in your head is telling you to play it cool. You look desperate. The voice might be onto something. Rumor has it that what the staff at Dutch Bros Coffee thinks of you counts. And what they think about you is reflected in the color of the straw in your drink. The Dutch Bros Straw Code. To be clear, Dutch Bros themselves say this is silly, and that there is no secret straw code, and we value each one of our customers equally. With that said, perception is everything. The saying, if enough people believe something to be true, then it's true, comes to mind. This is important if you get a pink straw, which is supposedly reserved for attractive people. Try telling someone that is smugly swirling their drink with a pink straw that there isn't a secret code, and that it's quote, silly. Again, all rumour, but green equals unsightly, orange equals mysterious, yellow, so-so or average, and blue equals rude. Now it has been pointed out that a busy broista, their words not mine, would be too busy to be deciding what colour straw someone deserves in their drink. An element of truth perhaps, but a broista needs to let off steam from time to time and do a little communicating. The music is pumping and you've got a handful of pink straws at your disposal. Things just got interesting. And in any case, if Dutch bros wanted this wild, unfound, silly conspiracy theory to stop, they could always use multicoloured straws. Just saying. Dutch Bros Coffee is now well on the way to being a serious player in the coffee world. A growing name with a distinctive brand. So where did all this start? The seed of this idea started on a farm, the Borsmus Farm in Grant Pass, Oregon. In 1992, two brothers, Dane and Travis Borsma, started out experimenting with 100 pounds of coffee beans and began selling coffee from a stand. Dane Borsma was of Dutch heritage. His brother Travis was also, hence the name Dutch Bros Coffee. The brothers decided that the coffee business was more alluring than the dairy farm they were used to. Plus new regulations forced a change from farming, and so decided to make the move from this farm au lait to selling freshly roasted coffee. New pastures await. Being third generation dairy farmers will have set the brothers up for the hard work that lay ahead, and also the early mornings required of the coffee business. Dane Borsma once said, One of the most rewarding things in this change of occupation was going from smelling cow manure to smelling coffee. You'd open the bag and it was like heaven. With a newly purchased double-head espresso machine, the brothers went about experimenting in a barn building on the farm. With music being played loud on the stereo, the doors flung open. This would become a theme of things to come. They wheeled their newfound coffee skills on a mobile cart into the southern Oregon town of Grants Pass. The local community soon warmed to their variety of flavoured coffees, and the Dutch Brothers Coffee Company began to grow. From a small mobile cart, the next step was to open a fixed location in the form of a coffee stand. Still small, but people now had a place to find them. Dutch Brothers Coffee would slowly grow from their base in Southern Oregon, opening up drive through locations without much fanfare. The company would encounter a setback that would be both sad and unexpected. Dane Borsma was diagnosed with ALS in 2004, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, or motor neuron disease depending on where you are in the world. Sadly, Dane passed away in 2009 as a result from this horrific disease. If anything was going to test the culture of laid-back, loud music playing, all smiles culture of Dutch Bros, it would be this. But Dane was largely responsible for this upbeat attitude that was instilled in Dutch Bros coffee, and so it would be a shame for that not to continue. One of the ways Dutch Bros looks to ensure this kind of ethos is by promoting from within. It's a policy that seems to work well for the company. This means that anyone taking on a new franchise already has plenty of experience of how coffee is served Dutch Bros style. Otherwise, someone might just come in, shut the doors and turn the music down. That would be simply unacceptable. Opening franchises like this seems like a good strategy. If you get to open one, it's because you've earned it the old-fashioned way. You understand all the moving parts of the machine. Dutch Bros says it wants to empower employees, and no doubt this pays off. There is often a disconnect that runs through the franchise system. Many managers of a restaurant, even if proven to be successful, would have access to all the means to begin franchising. The step is too far. The result is, from day one at Dutch Bros, in theory, you have a genuine path you can follow to own your own locations. What's more, it benefits the people that come in at the ground up, the OGs. The smiles, therefore, might well be genuine and not painted on like many of Dutch Bros competitors. 
If that smile does slip, or the music does get turned down, you never know when the boss might suddenly appear, discreetly and inconspicuously, wearing a fancy dress wig and false teeth, being followed by half a TV network. Nothing to see here. Like when Travis Borsma appeared on Undercover Boss, a show that puts a boss of a company inside their own company, without anybody suspecting a thing. The episode does show a glimmer of the vibrant atmosphere at Dutch Bros. A lot of high energy, loud music and customers to serve. The music has been a running theme from the beginning, when the brothers were experimenting with coffee in the barn on the family farm. This is the flip side of the coin in comparison to what is usually expected when you visit a coffee place, especially one that is not a quirky independent. Dutch Bros is bridging the vibe of large chain corporation with quirky independent coffee shop vibe, and they appear to be pulling it off. Dutch Bros is more of an automotive carnival of coffee than a conveyor belt of caffeinated corporate misery. So expect some tunes if you visit. Sing along if you must. The urban sprawl is the native habitat of most corporate coffee enterprises. A densely packed population, usually on foot and needing a caffeine boost to survive the rat race. But from the get-go, Dutch Bros has seen the car as king, with an eye on out-of-town locations that were easier to access by car. drive through sales is the focus, as opposed to sit-down coffee shops and becoming a coffee destination rather than paying for city centre locations. This is particularly relevant given where the company started. Origins of a rural town, not a cosmopolitan city, and a starting place on the west coast, where car culture is an important way of life, a necessity. The popularity is therefore explained with a stronghold in the western states of America, an area with plenty of room both from a market point of view and geographically. Southeast expansion is where a lot of the recent growth has been, moving towards states like Texas and with plans of opening up locations in Oklahoma. This West Coast coffee brand is branching out further now and bringing more locations at a faster rate with an 800 location, 5 year expansion strategy. This is largely due to recent investment from an outside investor. This investment for growth was secured from TSG Consumer Partners. As the name suggests, their portfolio is a pretty diverse selection of consumer brands, not just food and drink companies. The Dutch Bros magic. TSG clearly sees the potential to expand further into the market. So what's on offer from Dutch Bros Coffee? Where's the magic? First things first. The company does not outsource the roasting of their coffee. They take care of that themselves. Still hand roasted, which although sounds unnecessarily painful, is a good thing. Still done in Grants Pass, Oregon, and transported to their drive throughs The menu, bright in colour, is still focused on a core range of quick serve drinks that suit the drive through model. Easily customisable, but can be prepared quickly. While there is a lot of coffee on offer, as you would imagine, cold drinks are abundant. Most of the Dutch Bros locations are in hot climates, especially in summer. Makes a great deal of sense to incorporate cold drinks to the menu. Flavoured coffee was used as samples from the very beginning of the Dutch Bros journey. Today varieties like Dutch Frost and Dutch Freeze are popular, and they even had their own line of energy drinks in Blue Rebel, with wild names like the Vampire Slayer, Shark Attack and Peach. Already, the vibe seems a little different, less appeal to a sobering clientele, more of a drive through coffee break at a backstage green room. The smiling and the customer service seem to be more likely to be genuine. More attention is given to the experience of visiting than just the product bought. The product is a wider concept, more than a standard coffee, but an experience that's different. Not everyone's cup of tea. That's the point. You'll find Dutch Bros Coffee in over 400 locations, mainly down the west coast of the United States. They now sell many cups of coffee. Dutch Bros has grown an average of 12% a year between 2014 and 2019, and it grew 15% in 2019. The chain is also on track with the plan to expand more locations into more states, which could see Dutch Bros double in size in the next few years. That's double Dutch in case you didn't understand that last part. Jumping back to today, and a move like many into technology, in order to speed up service and make the whole process more efficient, Dutch Bros introduced an app to incorporate contactless payment and a contactless version of the traditional loyalty and reward scheme, like a remote try from the Amazon. Contactless is preferred. As a regular customer, you'll be able to make your order from the app. This seems to be a future strategy. A young tech-savvy customer base will fare well when it comes to the take-up of an app, unless things go full circle, and it's not the in thing to be doing things digitally, and young customers want to bring back stamps and paper cards. Who knows? The Amazon tribe wouldn't be happy. And happy is the name of the game. If Dutch Bros Coffee is not casting magic, it's more of a creed, Dutch creed, a guide to inner Dutch Bros like peace and optimism. This creed is actually the Optimist Creed, with the word Optimist replaced with Dutch. Creating your own creed could be time consuming. Time you could spend experimenting with coffee beans in a disused barn, fooling people with a disguise, or deciding whether you're ugly or not by the colour of the straw you've just been given. All things Dutch Bros Coffee, let me know. Thanks for watching.